Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about the discriminant. The discriminant is part of the quadratic formula. The discriminant is this piece of the quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac. You might remember that is the part that's underneath the square root symbol, um, and it is denoted by delta. So we sometimes say delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Now uh, we have three different scenarios for what delta could be. Delta could be greater than zero, delta could be equal to zero, delta could be less than zero. If delta is greater than zero, then we know that there are two real solutions. If delta is equal to zero, then we know that there is one real solution. And if delta is less than zero, then we have no real solutions. Let's take a look at that. Delta is greater than zero. So here delta is greater than zero. So what this means is that here we have two solutions, two spots where this thing crosses the x-axis. We have where delta is equal to zero. That is where we have one spot where it equals, uh, where it touches the x-axis. And then we have delta is less than zero where it does not meet. Now, why does this happen? Uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the quadratic formula. So we know that x is equal to negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So uh, you might be familiar with the quadratic formula all into one, uh, one fraction. I like to split it up because I like to kind of take it by parts. Um, but let's consider this piece. This piece right here. What happens if this is greater than zero? So greater than zero, this means this is going to be a positive number. Um, and let's just put a positive number in there. And let's, I'm just going to take, uh, for instance, let's say this thing equals, I'm going to take an easy number, but let's say it equals nine. Well, if that's the case, then what happens is over here, whatever two, whatever a is, we're going to add three because the square root of nine is three. We're going to add three over this and we're going to subtract three over this. So what happens is whatever we calculate over here, we're going to add something to it and we're going to subtract something to it. So if we've got, if we have a uh, axis of symmetry here, we have an axis of symmetry, so maybe this thing it looks like this, where we've got an axis of symmetry here. I'm just going to do it for this one uh, side here. So if we've got an axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a, then we have to add 3 over 2a, so maybe that takes us to this spot. And if we have the axis of symmetry and then we subtract, 3 over 2a, that will take us to this spot. So if it's greater than 0, we're going to add two things to this. So we're, that's going to give us those two intercepts. And again, that could be here, it could be over here, it could be in, in either one of these. It doesn't really matter. But what's essentially happening is we are getting two of our intercepts there. Now, if we make this thing equal to 0, so let's take this and let's make it now equal to 0. So that's this piece right here. So again, let's take our axis of symmetry. Uh, look now, our axis of symmetry actually is where it crosses the x-axis. And if we think about what happens over here, the square root of zero, well, the square root of zero is zero. Zero over anything is also zero. So we're just left with, we're just left with negative b over 2a. All of this goes away. So hey, look at that, We've, we're only touching at one spot and that's where the vertex is and that crosses through that negative b over 2a. And finally, what happens if we have it less than zero? If we are less than zero, that's going to be a negative number. So let's say negative, th uh, negative well, we'll keep it at nine, negative nine. So negative nine. The square root of negative 9. So what times itself gives us negative 9? There are no numbers that you can do that with. Because uh, you, you would need either a positive 3 times a negative 3 
or a negative 3, of course, times a positive 3. Those two things are not the same, so you can't find the square root of that. There's no real solutions there. There's only imaginary solutions. So this is not possible. So since that is not possible, this whole thing doesn't exist. Whoops. This whole thing doesn't exist over here because it's not possible. So uh, we can't add or subtract the square root from something that's impossible to do. So that's how we end up with these things not touching the x-axis. It's impossible for these things to have roots because they don't touch the x-axis. It's impossible for us to calculate the square root of a negative number. So that's why these things are related the way that they are. So let's take a look at a couple examples and see how we might find or how we might use this idea of the discriminant and it being greater than, equal, or less than zero. So the first question says, hey, use the discriminant to just determine does this thing have, it says determine the relationship of the graph and the x-axis. That basically means is this thing going to be crossing at two spots, one spot, or not at all? And same with this one. So I'm going to start by saying here is my A is 1, my B is positive 3, and my C is 4. So if I'm using the discriminant, so I know the discriminant is B squared minus 4AC, then I'm just going to substitute these values right back into here. So uh, my discriminant is equal to 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4. All right, so in this case, uh, the discriminant equals 9 minus 16. So I've got 4 times 4 subtraction there, so I get the discriminant is equal to negative 7. So that means there are no real solutions. No real solutions for this one. So that would be the purple situation where it's less than zero. And what about this other equation? Well, here we have A equals negative 2, B equals positive 5, C equals positive 1. So again, let's put these into our, uh, our equation of delta equaling B squared minus 4AC. So... B, so delta is going to equal b squared, 5 squared, minus 4, times a, times c. So delta equals 25, and now we've got negative 4 times negative 2 times positive 1, so that's going to be plus 8, so delta is going to equal 32, so therefore there are 2 real solutions or two roots. I don't know what they are yet. I would actually have to go through and calculate those and finish out the quadratic equation to find that, but I do know that it's going to cross two times the x-axis. So we've got one where it does not cross. We've got one where it crosses in two spots. That's all fun. Uh, but let's look at one that is a little bit more complicated. This is one that you'll probably see on exams a little bit more frequently. It's something like this, and then we'll go into ones that are just a little bit more tricky than this even. So we're going to look to see where does this equation... Oh, now we don't know what C is. C is some variable. So we have to find the value for K that makes this thing cut the axis twice. So it could either be one of these two. I guess it's going to be this one because this is positive here, so it's going to look more like this. Where it touches the x-axis, again, where it's just touching at one spot, and where it misses the x-axis. So we're going to find different values of k to show where each of these different things happen. All right, so uh, let's start with the green one, where it cuts the, cut, uh, cuts the x-axis two times. So in this case, I know that I want the discriminant to be greater than 0. I want b squared minus 4ac to be greater than 0. So I have my a equaling 1, my b equals negative 6, 
my C equals K. So I'm gonna drop these same values right into here. So don't get confused that we have this K, it just means we're gonna solve for what K is. So B squared, so negative six squared minus four times A, which is one, times C, which is K, and that has to be greater than zero in order to cut the X axis twice. So I have 36 minus 4K is greater than zero. I'm gonna add my 4K to both sides. So that gives me 36 is greater than 4K. If I divide both sides by four, I have K is less than, uh, what is that, nine? Or I can say that K is greater than, whoops, no, no, I can't. I can say that K is less, less than nine. So when K is less than nine, when K is less than nine, notice the, the, the pointy part is still pointing to the K, so that's, these two statements are equivalent. I, they're just mirror images of each other. When K is less than nine, any value less than nine, then I'm gonna have this. So, you know, any value less than nine. So that means, you know, we, we could have this thing that that's sliding up and down and going all over the place. So it's it's not necessarily meaning that it's right there. It could be here, it could be here, it could be here. It could just keep on going up and down, uh, but it's gonna have a whole range of values. All the values less than nine is gonna make this happen. And then when we go to when the discriminant equals zero, sometimes I'll even just start here with this one um, and as opposed to starting with this one. But, you know, in this case, we'll just, we'll just keep on going here. So when this thing equals zero, so B squared, again, minus 4AC has got to equal zero. Well, you know what? Basically right here, I already know all of this stuff is going to be the same thing here. So I can say... 36 minus 4k is got to be equal to zero. Add my 4k to both sides and divide by four. So k equals nine. So when k equals nine, I know I'm going to touch at one spot. When k is less than nine, I know I'm going to be crossing over at two spots. Well, that leaves me with the same, uh, with one option left. When K is greater than nine, I'm going to have where these things do not meet. So there is no intersection there. Now notice that when this thing, when this thing is greater than zero, this is less than nine. So don't just think that, hey, if I'm gonna put something in for my, my uh, B squared minus four AC, the, the, the inequalities are gonna match. That's not necessarily the case. So you do actually have to go through this process with uh, one of the inequalities to make sure that you know which way the, the inequality goes as you are graphing these. So make sure you do follow through with that um, with at least one of these and then you can double check it with an equals or like I said, sometimes I start here with the equals first and then I'll, I'll kind of do the same thing. I'll stop like maybe right in here and I'll just jump right in and then continue working down from there. So, you know, again, if I did that over here, I would just have to do 36 minus 4K, and that's got to be less than zero. So it's a negative number. Uh, okay, so 36 is less than 4K. Again, when I divide by four on both sides, I still get this K is greater than nine or k is greater than nine, which is the same thing that we had right here. So, um, you know, again, just, just, just make sure you're keeping track of those, those uh, inequality signs. They do not necessarily match up here. Something to just keep it, keep in mind as you're going through these. All right, we've got one more set of these problems. Um, we have various levels of k questions here, or k, uh, any k values and we really want to find uh, kind of where these benchmarks happen with these different spots of k now this one this one was basically done we already did that one up above so i'm, I'm going to actually skip over this one for right now that'll be a good one for you to practice um, on your own and uh, 
you know, so you can you can do that and you can follow along exactly what we did right here. It's almost exactly the same. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into this one and this one. So I'm going to say, where does this thing cut the x axis twice? So I know the discriminant. Well, actually, let's start by figuring out what a, b, and c is. a is equal to k, b is equal to negative 4, c is equal to 1. All right, so there's our, our three values for this one. So cuts the x-axis twice. So that is when delta is greater than 0. So I want b squared minus 4ac greater than 0 b squared, negative 4 squared, minus 4 times a times c, and that's got to be greater than 0. All right, so 16 minus 4k, that's got to be greater than 0. Add my 4k to both sides. So 16 is greater than 4k, divide by 4, divide by 4. So k is less than 4, or k is less than 4. So there we go. Again, the inequality is not necessarily lining up here. But when k is less than 4, we know that this thing is going to cut the x-axis twice. As we saw up above, when k equals 4, it's going to cut the x-axis uh, one time, because we can just change that into an equal sign, right? We did that right here less than equal sign and then the last one where does it where does it miss the x-axis well i'm just going to flip the inequality and that's going to be when k is greater than four so here are my four solutions this is when delta is less than zero this is when delta is equal to zero this is when delta is uh nope sorry have that wrong this is when delta is greater than zero, delta is equal to zero, and delta is less than zero. So here we go with these three bits right here. And now let's do the same thing over here. This one's a, a little bit trickier, and then um, we'll follow, follow through this, this same suit here. So let's start with our A, B, and C. A equals K plus 1 b equals negative 2k, c equals k minus 4. So it looks like it's going to be a lot trickier, but really we're just going to keep on doing the same thing that we've been doing. So we're going to do our b squared, negative 2k squared, minus 4 times a, k plus 1, times c, k, mi k minus 4. And that's got to be greater than 0 for it to cross two times. So 4k squared minus, well, you know what, I'm going to do this first. So k times k, it's k squared, minus 4k plus 1k, so there's minus 3k, and then minus 4, and that's going to be greater than 0. Distribute my negative 4, plus 12k, plus 16, this has got to be greater than 0. Oh, look at this, this is nice. These things can't uh, subtract out to 0. So I'm left with 12k is greater than 16, divided by my 12. So k is greater than, uh, let's see, that both of those are divisible by 4, so that's what, 4 thirds? So when k is less than, or greater than 4 thirds, we have this thing crossing at two values. When k is equal to four thirds, we know it's gonna cross at one spot. And when k is less than four thirds, then it is going to cross at no spots. So notice here again, now this time these actually line up where the inequalities do line up. So you never know, so you always have to go through, as I keep on saying, you always have to go through and make sure you double check that to see which one, uh, which way the inequalities go. Don't just assume. Um, 
I hope that helps with the discriminant problems and I'll talk to you in the next video.